Driving It Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. All right, we're back with another Driving It Home podcast. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer here at the Austin Board of Realtors, joining Claire, Dr. Claire Losey. Thank you for joining us, Claire. Thanks for having me. We're back at it with another week. And in anticipation of this week's Consumer Price Index, those numbers are being released. Let's kick it off by talking about what we are expecting on the inflation front and how this will affect the Fed in its rate decision next week. So as listeners will remember, inflation has continued to decelerate over the past several months, and that has allowed the Fed to lift its foot off the monetary policy tightening pedal, so to speak. However, there are some concerns that the inflation numbers for August could be a little bit higher just because in the last week of August especially, we saw a pretty stark increase in crude oil prices. So the West Texas Intermediate was hovering around about $80 per barrel the last Monday of August and then was up to about $85, $86 per barrel by the end of the month. So just some indication there that headline inflation, which is a measure of total inflation, and it's including those more volatile categories of food and energy, may be a little bit higher than otherwise anticipated. In terms of how it could affect the Fed's decision, probably speaking, the Fed will not choose to raise rates in its meeting next week. They've already indicated as such, and markets have priced that in. They tend not to like to reverse course, to to change course, you know, the last minute. So it's likely that we won't see a rate hike next week, despite any higher than anticipated inflation readings for August. However, this could play into future rate hikes, you know, in the November or December meetings. Gotcha. And so things are holding pretty steadily then, you know, as far as what we're seeing now over their last decision to raise rates. That's correct. Yes. And probably the biggest impact that we've seen thus far with the rise in crude oil prices on the market itself is just with respect to the 10-year treasury yield. So as listeners will know, just by the still elevated mortgage rates, the 10-year T yield continues to hover around that 4.25, 4.3% range And this is largely because just that rise in oil prices that we were talking about earlier has reignited those global inflationary concerns. And so investors are pricing that in and it's being reflected in the 10-year T yield just with that higher yield, again, you know, reflecting concerns about inflation. All right. So just a little nugget there for this week and something to watch as we go into the next meeting, the next Fed, Fed meeting. So this week, as you know, we are dropping our monthly stats. And just as I always ask you, can you give us a little sneak peek at our August stats, maybe a little teaser on which price ranges have seen a year over year increase in sales? Absolutely. So just generally speaking, we actually saw stronger than expected performance in August. And I say that just because, of course, mortgage rates reached recent highs in August. However, the market remained fairly robust. With respect to sales activity within certain price ranges, what we've seen is that on a year-over-year basis, those very affordable home price ranges, especially that below four hundred, dollars below $350,000 price range, that has remained extremely hot and, and sales have increased within those cohorts. And we have to remember, too, that in August of 2022, of course, the rise in mortgage rates was still relatively new. And the first effect of an increase in mortgage rates is going to be on those first time buyers, those lower income buyers, you know, folks who are more likely to purchase those more affordable homes. They're going to be hit first by any sort of increase in in mortgage rates, especially such a precipitous increase as we saw over, you know, the mid half of 2022. But now what we've seen is really this retrenchment in activity and sales activity among those higher price cohorts, 
really especially kind of that six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar price range because those investors or those buyers in particular they are really kind of looking at home ownership and saying to themselves right now okay there are other alternatives within the market that I could be investing in why right now would I choose home ownership and so we're seeing somewhat again of a retrenchment in sales activity within kind of those upper price tiers, just because there are a lot of competitive assets at play right now. Of course, we know that homeownership is the primary means by which households in the U.S. build wealth, and it's a time-tested mechanism for building wealth. However, it's just, it may be difficult for buyers to see that right now, again, when there are a lot of other competitive alternatives to invest in right now in the market. Yeah, you really broke that down for us in the buy versus rent index a couple of months ago. And I encourage our listeners to go back and take a look at that report. It was very well done and a lot of data and research surrounding surrounding buying versus renting. So let's be sure to plug that and check that out as well. So let's let's flip it over to what's going on with our weekly stats. Can you give us an update for this last week and what we can expect next week? Absolutely. So we saw, as expected a retrenchment in activity this week. And I say as expected, just because when we're thinking about comparing last week to the week prior, we have to remember that last week was, you know, marked Labor Day, the Labor Day holiday on Monday. And so that was a full day without any sales transacting in the marketplace. So in the Austin MSA, we saw a decline in closed sales of about 56% on a week-over-week basis. And two, we have to remember that we saw a very high number of transactions in the marketplace the prior week. Again, just folks trying to close on their homes before the Labor Day holiday, whatnot. So I would just caution listeners, again, as we talked about last week, you know, this week's data is not going to be the most reliable in terms of looking at it on a longer term basis, right? Just because, again, we're looking at, you know, comparing on a week over week basis, a holiday weekend to a more normal week. So it'll take, you know, once we reach next week, it will be kind of a a more apples to apples type comparison, if that makes sense. But overall, you know, again, we've just seen this week um, on a week over week basis, kind of a a slowdown in sales and activity in general, and as well as on the leasing front. I think people are settling into getting back to school and uh, taking on the you know fourth quarter and all of the things to come as we close out this year. Well, thank you so much for that. Be sure to tune in next week because we will have our monthly stats as well as the week over week update. So it sounds like we'll have a little bit more deep dive of some of the stats and numbers for next week. Thank you so much for joining us, Claire. Thank you to those of you for listening. Don't forget that our Diversity Summit and annual meeting is on September 20th from 10 to 2. You can register online at awar.com. We are offering it as a virtual as well as an in-person event. And so we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again, everybody. See you next week. 